Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended with otitis externa. So otitis externa is an umbrella term given to an outer ear infection or and or inflammation. And this patient attended, I believe back in May, and they at the time also attended with otitis externa, but on that occasion the ear was severely swollen. It was it was really difficult to get access. I managed to get into the ear despite the ear being extremely swollen and we referred the patient to their GP to uh, receive the necessary treatment. And uh, the patient contacted us early on the week and they said that they visited the doctor after uh, they received my referral, they were prescribed some medication and they felt, although the ear significantly improved, it hadn't quite fully improved. And so they brought back in with myself and you can see the swelling's gone. Um, and, and when I mean it was completely inflamed, it was just impossible, virtually neon impossible to gain access. But I, I did manage to gain access using a fine end last time. And I removed the majority of the discharge. I had a lot of discharge, a lot of pus. Uh, on this occasion, the patient um, has got what it appears to be a fungal infection. And the way you can diagnose a fungal infection is... Um, if you there's two strains of fungal infection the first one which is the most common one i think it's about 70 or 80 percent of the most common strain of fungal infection at least in the ear is aspergillus uh, niger and a hallmark of aspergillus niger is either fungal spores they can be black or uh, white and you may have seen you will see it again in a minute this patient's got fungal spores on the on the on the ear canal on the dead skin you can see it surrounding that or um, an, another type of fungal infection is called candida, so that's more common with thrush, uh, with children on their, on their mouth, a soft palate on the tongue. And that's more of a creamy, thick discharge. So the patient hasn't got candida, but it's very likely they've got, um, uh, as I said, uh, aspergillus uh, niger, so it's fungal infection. And you can see that they're actually on the skin itself. So we're just trying to peel us away. Now, if you've got um, a, a fungal infection, is it can occur... Um, if, um, if you have a bacterial infection, secondary to a bacterial infection, if the bacterial infection is not um, successfully treated, so um, if you visit an ENT, for example, and you've got a, a bacterial infection, they typically prescribe um, antibiotic spray, topical spray or drops that go into the ear and directly target the bacteria. Um, if you are prescribed oral antibiotics, the problem with those is that they're not as effective as killing the bacteria in the ear, and it will obviously have some effect. And then because the ear is still slightly infected and um, the bacteria, there's less also good bacteria, because when you have antibiotics, it also do, it can kill the good bacteria as well. It gives an opportunity to the fungal, uh, for the fungus in the ear to, if there is any there, to uh, multiply because it can out-compete um, the bacteria in the ear, um, especially the good bacteria, that's also, obviously, when you have antibiotics, it will also um, kill the good bacteria, not just the, the bad ones. And so if uh, a bacterial infection is not successfully treated, there's always opportunity for the fungal uh, infection to take rise, because antibiotics is not going to affect the fungus, you see. Um, and, but if you've got a bacterial infection because it's and it's active, that's going to outcompete the fungal infection. So uh, we just made sure um, in this occasion that uh, when we've written to, the, written to the GP again and just advised that they take an uh, ear swab just to confirm whether this is a bacterial infection or a fungal infection. If it is uh, bacterial, to ensure that they have um, topical treatment. So I don't think they had that last time. And last time it was quite understandable because the ear canal was so swollen, it would have been very difficult to for the patient to instill any drops of spray in the ear. So if it was the case last time that the patient was prescribed with um, oral antibiotics, I completely can understand that because it would have been really, really hard for them to apply topical antibiotics, which is always recommended if possible. Now, the other issue with topical antibiotics is if you've got a perforation of the eardrum, uh, which the patient didn't have um, last time, but if a patient does have a perforation, many of the topical uh, uh, antibiotic sprays or drops that go directly in the ear are what we call ototoxic. And ototoxic medication, um, um, ototoxicity means um, medication that can cause hearing loss. Um, so many 
over, uh, over many prescribed um, antibiotics for the ear, topical ones, they contain what we call an aminoglycoside. And aminoglycosides, they don't kill bacteria, but they prevent them from multiplying and regrowing. And we're hoping because the bacteria can't multiply after its lifespan, it dies because um, it, it can't reproduce itself, it can't multiply, and then that, that's the way of killing it. Um, but these aminoglycosides, and they typically end in mycin. So if you've got a medication that ends in mycin, either spelt M-Y-C-I-N or M-I-C-I-N, like gen, uh, gentamicin, neomycin, streptomycin, erythromycin, these are all forms of um, aminoglycosides that can cause, uh, that are all ototoxic. So they can't be prescribed um, if a patient's got a perforation and they've got bacterial infection. So sometimes all antibiotics are given because you can prescribe that. Um, however, there's a, a, a medication, um, ciprofloxacin. I'm not great with pronouncing medications. So I do apologize if, if I'm not pronouncing them as correctly as it should be. So, but ciprofloxacin is, is an antibiotic that can be prescribed even if a patient's got a perforation and they are uh, normally uh, prescribed for eye infections and ENT and GPs used to prescribe it off-label for ear infections, but now they don't have to prescribe it off-label because they are also manufactured as separate eardrop ciprofloxacin and they can be used um, if a patient's got a perforated eardrum. So I'm just using the fine end. I'm just trying to remove as much debris, dead skin, uh, discharge off the canal wall. We're not going to get every little aspect. We're on the bony part of the ear canal. This is a very sensitive region of the ear. So I'm just going to get as much out as we can. The, the hearing is significantly improved. So now that I've cleaned the majority of this infection, the patient will need to undergo a course of either antibiotics or uh, antifungal medication. Antifungal medication in the UK, typically uh, it's a caniston. And the thing with um, fungal infections, they are difficult to completely stamp out. So um, after, again, we've written on the, the referral to the GP, we've ensured that if it is a fungal infection for them to just return after the course, just to make sure uh, it's on top of um, the, the fungal infection has fully resolved. And if not, uh, obviously they'll need some uh, additional uh, course of antifungals. Uh, key with fungal infections is to avoid humid, wet, environments avoid water steam rooms for example anywhere where you in the home for example if you if you um, the fungus normally grows in these warm damp um, also can be cold conditions sometimes as well but the key is to keep the ear dry and we've informed the patients that they are keen swimmers so it's advised them just to stay away uh, try not to go swimming even though you can get swim plugs but because the ear canal is swollen as well and it's slightly infected you don't really want to put anything in the ear you want to keep it aerated and just to avoid swimming in the meantime until this infection is resolved. So I've got the majority of the skin out. You can see the eardrum. Any more, it was, can, it was getting slightly uncomfortable for the patient because we're on the bony part. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care of yourselves. Speak soon. And um, I will shut up loads more just soon.